Great morning, holy brother! Thank you so much for joining us on our pathway to peace. If you're following along inside the Garden of Peace Ground on page 284, the bottom, and today's lesson is called Disorganized Degenerates. Amen. Wives cannot stand if their husbands do not have organization and structure of work or study in their lives. They cannot take it. Nothing to do with them. Mind your own business. No, 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 no. No way, Jose. They cannot stand to see their husbands sitting idle. Even if it's for two seconds. They just want, no, 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 honey. You've been on the couch for hours. You did nothing all day. This is what they think in their heads, 100%. I know people who come to Armenia for a second and they miss a day or two. Their wives think they're the biggest bums in the world. They're encouraging to get up in the morning. I'm happy. Come on, let's go. Rock with us. If a husband finds himself in such a state of limbo, he must not spend days at home. Moshe, who was here yesterday, not this Moshe, the other Moshe, who sits next to the other Moshe, he said that what? The best advice is? Never come home. <laughs> never, never, never come home. home. But don't spend all your extra time just lounging around at home. It'll create so many problems. Find something to do that's productive, but if you can't, at least don't do it in front of your wife. You'll sleep in the car. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. He should rise early. Come to Vasikin. Pray at sunrise. And then stay out for the day. Do your learning in the shul. Take care of what you need to. Don't just sit. If you have nothing to do, you want to catch up on your phone, whatever it might be, don't do it in front of your wife's face. So she thinks that you're just wasting your life away. So return home closer to the evening. During the day, you should make every effort to seek regular work. Of course, you should be working and establish a fixed praying and learning schedule. But if not, at least when you're on your way, when you're trying, when you're praying to Hashem, hopefully for it, to ask for that clarity and guidance, don't do it at home in front of your wife. Until he does, he can engage in short-term projects. Whatever happens. So you said don't pray in front of your wife? Don't pray in front of your wife. You should never pray in front of anybody, especially when you're doing a spot of this, because you need to be able to express yourself, to say what you want, to say how you're feeling. So especially if you do it in front of your wife, she might be the cause of a lot of your stress, right? Never, right? But she might be the cause of what's bothering you. How can you express that if she's standing there in the room, right? That's why people go to psychologists and psychologists, and they talk about what they need to, but their family's not literally in front of them. It would be very hard for them to say things that they mean with that kind of audience and those people in the room. Whatever happens, stay the bleep the heck out of your home. In the evening too, a husband should occupy himself with constructive endeavors, such as learning Torah, personal prayer, devoting time to his wife. You know, I make these, I think, amazing, awesome Torah teaching music videos that people get real chizik from. They get real strength from. They learn about Torah. They engage in it. They love the songs. People give me amazing feedback. You know who's my biggest critic? Wife. My wife. She, she thinks that I'm wasting my time. Why am I not doing everything else? Why am I not working extra, whatever it might be? But if I can take care of everything that she wants, then I have extra time, fine. But if she doesn't know that I was working 10 hours, and all of a sudden she comes home, and I'm on the computer, oh boy, forget about it. Don't ever go on your computer when she's home. If I have a free hour during the day, or whatever it might be, then I can go ahead and take, but not when she's home, forget about it. The worst decision in the world. A cat potato husband cannot possibly have a healthy relationship with his wife. No matter what you are, what you're doing, who you think you are, it is not good. No exceptions. Being around the house all the time, he will get in her way. Even when she's making breakfast, she has a half an hour, let's say before she has to go out, to the gym, to her friends, or go to work, and she has those 25 minutes to make her bagel, and you're standing in the kitchen, every minute where she goes, you're going to be in her way. What are you doing? Yeah, I need to get this, I need to get that. Da, da. And you're like, no, no, here, here, here. I can't find a safe place. I cannot find it. There's no way. And she just gets mad at me. I'm like, I'm trying to spend the five minutes we have together with you at home so I can make you happy. It's not by doing that. Not being a get, get the heck out of her way. Stand in the dining room and talk to her. 
this upset her. It makes arguments and fights will ensue, and the peace will be shattered between them. But when he's out all day, they have a little space from one another, and then they look forward to seeing each other again in the evening when everything is taken care of, when everything is done, and they're going to have a wonderful, amazing relationship where they're yearning to be more together. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Don't be in her face all day, especially if you're going to do something that upsets her. Get out of there. Don't cause yourself more trouble. Do things that will make her happy. Maybe she likes a bagel ready when she comes downstairs with the butter and her, and her coffee, whatever, waiting. Find a way to make her happy about it for her to have less stress, but not to do things to be in her way to upset her when she's trying to accomplish what she needs to do and sees you doing nothing, sitting on the couch like a bum on your phone. We see that older couples, even older couples, sometimes get divorced. You think it's crazy. They've been living with each other with their whole lives. They know each other inside and out. They've already accomplished and overcome the hardest times of their life that were the most stressful. But now that they're older, they're going to get divorced? It makes no sense. You already lived 40 years together. What's wrong with you guys? Are you crazy? Like, you look at these old people and like, you're Meshugana. We got some screws loose in your head. How many more years do you have left that you don't want to be together with them? It seems very surprising because if they weren't getting along, maybe they should have got divorced long ago, right? And then saved themselves all the years of suffering. But if they were getting along before, why would they not get along now? Like, it makes no sense either way you look at it. So why now? So once their children are grown, once the kids are out of the house, then they usually have fewer expenses. Maybe they don't have as much debt. Maybe they paid off the house already. Maybe those things are gone from their life. Now they can sleep, they can rest, they can learn, they can go for leisurely walks, and generally take it more easy for the later part of their lives. They're free to serve Hashem without all these other obstacles in the way. You know, when you're kids, you wish you were adults. When you're adults, you wish you were kids. You wish you didn't have all the stresses that you have in your life right now. But when the older and all those things are out of the way, you should be gazelle, you should be good it should be amazing. You have all the money saved up, hopefully. Now you don't have all the stressors of everything with the kids getting them out, this and that. So what brings them such a, such a desire to that state where they would want a divorce later in life? The answer is super simple, son. The very fact that they're spending so much more time together is what's pushing them apart. You hear that? They're stepping on each other's toes so many more times now than they were before. Our sages say, a grandpa in the home is a stumbling block in the home. A grandpa who can't get around and move so fast, he may have a cane, may be hunched over, he's like a little rock, a stone stuck in the kitchen. And everywhere she tries to go, she's tripping over him, man. Because an old grandfather in the home considers himself the tribal elder. He can sit around all day giving instructions, giving advice, because he knows best. He knows what to do. He's going to tell everybody else. The tribal matron cannot take this for very long. If it doesn't stop, divorce may be the only option for her to get him the heck out of her way. She also wants to enjoy life. Doesn't she deserve it? After all those years and everything she did, now she's being told what to do from a guy. She's drinking her sitting on the couch and she's trying to do everything in the kitchen for her and for him. Despite many happy years together while marrying off all their children and maybe now even their grandchildren, she'll readily abandon him if he constantly criticizes and comments everything that she does. You think you had it rough before when you saw your wife for an hour a day running in different directions and then you have to be so careful walking on eggshells about everything you're saying? Imagine you're with her 24 hours a day. How many more opportunities do you have to slip up to say the wrong thing, to look in the wrong way at her that she gets upset? How many hours now do you have to interact with her to make sure you're golden? Think about it. How many is it? You're at work, right? You're at davening. You're in the car. How many hours you're away from her versus how many hours you're with her? Think about it. How many hours are you with her during the day? Even when you're sleeping, it doesn't necessarily count because you're not interacting. How many? How many in the morning? One hour. So you have three hours total of waking time 
All you have to do is shut your mouth and not say anything wrong. And still we screw up in only three hours. Like, hello, just set your watch. I only need to be good for another 180 minutes a day. That's it. I'm good. Let's go. I'm good. I got one down. One more down. One more down. Oh, 60 minutes left. 50 well, minutes left. Shabbat is like... Uh, Forget Shabbos. Regular weekday. The majority of your life. All you need is 180 minutes a day not to open your big fat trap and say something wrong. You can do it, man. You can do it. <laughs> Check every minute that goes by. Check it. Yes. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Great. And then you got your whole day done. But when you're home, every single minute and hour of the day... How much more challenging is that? Think about it. Crazy. It's almost impossible not to do something wrong, to mess up with something that you're going to say. So here you should be blessed. I only have these opportunities to do, to do right by. It's crazy when you think about it. Think about yourself. How many hours a day are you with your wife? Right? My wife is an OBGYN. She delivers babies all day, all night. Maybe during a weekday, or some mornings, she's not even home when I leave. And then at night, maybe I see her for an hour or two a night. I might send her text messages that I'm loving to her, that I'm caring about what she wants done, that I'm taking care and accomplishing that she loves to hear because she likes acts of kindness. So great. And when things get How done... You go on vacation. Huh? You go on vacation. Yes, but what's the norm? What's the majority? <laughs> Even Shabbos is one day a week, right? Of course you have more opportunities and times that you're going to be together. But try to maximize the effectiveness of those things, Right? She likes things to be done. So if she wants a box to be taken out in the morning or brought to school because she's not home, you better believe I'm setting reminders on my phone. Because, yeah, I know, I, I know it has to be done, but if I don't see it in front of my face, I might forget it. But I'm not going to let that slide because I know that if I don't, she's going to be on it, me for it for the next week, yelling at me why I didn't do it. But if I do do it, maybe I'll get a two-second compliment. But I know that she's happy that it's done, right? The opposite of laziness is... Alacrity, zealousness, zerizus, baby. The value of something done with alacrity, with speed, with absolute positivity and happiness and rocking energy is far greater than something done without it. You hear? The value of she sees you do it goes miles above just doing it. She asked me to take the box out. I said, no problem. I'm going to put it to the door that I know on my way out, there's no way I can get around that box. I'm going to have to see it or stumble or trip over it. You do it in a way where you're excited. Thank you so much for the midst of opportunity. I got to bring 50 boxes that came from China, shipped to my house, over to the school for Purim or for Hanukkah because she wants to do a project for the PTA. So I say, oh boy, look what's back. We got the boxes again. I, I got to schlep all of them over. Or I say, honey, thank you so much. I'm excited to help out. I know this project is meaningful for you, so I'm going to make it meaningful for me too because I want to be able to help out. I don't want to be able to take part in what you're doing to also make it less stressful for you. You're doing great things, so I want to help out. Even though I, I might hate doing it, I hate schlepping the boxes. They're heavy, they're annoying, it takes up so much of my time and my day. But I know it's making my wife what? Happy. It's ideally crazy if I don't do it, 100%. Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lozado, a blessed memory, says that when someone does something with alacrity, when he does it with zerizus, when he does it with pure positivity and extreme energy, it is a sign that he's enthusiastic about it. If a wife asks her husband to bring her something or to do some chore in the home, and he snaps to his feet, he jumps up out of bed, he shows her that he values her. He shows her that he's enthusiastic to do that thing for her. But if he tarries, and he's sluggish, and he's slow, and he's not excited, does whatever she wants, she might be more aggravated than if he didn't do it at all. It's crazy logically. But if you didn't do it, she might be mad. But if you do it with a sourpuss, and a sadness in your face, and an upsetness, and you have a mood, now that's gonna carry with her so much more, so much longer, so much more extreme. And that's going to destroy her inside and it's going to destroy you outside. Don't mess something up. It's not just, oh, I did it anyway. It's not. You did it anyway with a frown on your face. And that can be worse than if you didn't do it at all. 
You hear that? Take note. What kind of face you're putting on? What kind of words you're using? What kind of eyes are lighting up or frowning when you talk to her? Because what you mean on the inside is going to show on your face. Your panim is going to show on your panim. Right? You want to be smile. You want to be happy. Because that's what you want back in your life. And you want to do the mitzvah of making her extremely joyous. Right? Run like a deer! Be swift like an eagle to do the will of your Father in Heaven. You've heard this before? And the will of your Father in Heaven is what? That you should? Do your wife's will. Yes. <laughs> but how should you do your wife's will? In the same exact manner. You run like that deer and you fly as swift as that eagle to make your wife happy, to fulfill her wills, to fulfill her wishes. To make her extremely joyous when she sees you full of positivity. When she sees you smiling, when she asks you to take it to garbage, it makes her whole day different. Yeah? She doesn't want to have to tell you to do it. She wants you to do it. But she wants you to do it with happiness and joy. Bring that into your home. Don't you want your kids to be happy? Don't you want your kids, when you ask them to do something, to run and jump up and say, Thank you, Tati, for the mitzvah opportunity. I'm so happy to be able to do this for you. To be able to do a mitzvah. When I say, can you please get the ice tea from downstairs? Or to say, oh, you asked me last time. Why can't you ask my sister? Wow. Now you're going to lose your iPod time for tonight. You're not going to get extra games. You put on that attitude because you want that to reflect and reverberate in your home. You do it, the live by example. And you act like you want other people to do, like your kids to see, for them to show what kind of love you have for your wife. So not only will they have that for their spouses when they grow up, but they'll have it for you as well when it comes to taking care of you when you need it too. And with that, have an awesome day, amazing rest of your day.